Okay, let's revisit. Um, let's revisit the ordered solids here. And I mean, what we've 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 seen before is um, say something like sodium chloride, right? I'm drawing some chlorine ions in here. Okay, um, we'll organize in a regular repeating arrangement with other ions, say for example, sodium, okay, sodium, that's positive, okay. And I wanted to just, uh, I want to look at this in a little more detail and particularly look at the energetics to show that this is in fact um, energetically favorable, that is it'll result in a lower energy, okay, things, you know, a pen falls to the ground if it falls off your desk or because it goes, it achieves a lower potential energy. Well, similarly, if this system achieves a lower energy by crystallizing it will and so the, I mean what we've, we've mentioned before is we, we're going to achieve a lower energy by forming the crystal or an organized solid and I just like to go through that step by step by looking at the example of sodium chloride okay which we know is actually going to form this ordered solid uh, which has this arrangement as an accurate two-dimensional slice through sodium chloride. <clears throat> so what what I'd like to do is start uh, look at a, a little reaction here. So we could consider solid sodium, okay, solid sodium, and then plus some chlorine uh, in the gas phase. And um, it's actually not just a free chlorine; it's diatomic. So we're going to have two of those, and we're going to have to consider only half of that. Um, and then this is going to ultimately go to the uh, the final product here, which is NaCl as a solid. And that's what we know it's going to be, but we'd like to look at the energetics of it. And the interesting thing we can do, we can proceed through this and kind of look at the, the individual little reactions that you could consider individually to get you from these um, products to these, uh, sorry, these reactants. I think I said products earlier for this. These product, these reactants to these this product. Um, so, you know, what we we could start with is sodium solid, and that's going to go to sodium in the gas phase, and then that gas, and so that that's vaporization. Okay, that gas then, we got these free uh, atoms of sodium in the gas phase, can then dissociate, um, or, or correction, can, can uh, ionize. So that sodium, this is what we discussed for, um, for ionic bonding, it'll, it'll ionize to an ion, a cation of positive sodium, again in the gas phase, plus an electron. And then... We would also kind of in parallel consider well what what might chlorine do? So we got chlorine in the gas, which has to dissociate to two uh, chlorine atoms. Uh, you know, and I'm just kind of being graphical here. We're, we're only concerned with half of that, right? So that means that we're going to have one chlorine in the gas phase that we're concerned with, which is then going to Accept this electron, right? That's what that is, and form an ion of an anion of chlorine in the gas phase. But we're not we're not there yet, right? We want to form this salt, this solid. So we would then take, if you will, take these two things and consider. Okay, now what happens when we get this sodium cation? In the gas phase plus the chlorine anion again in the gas phase and they're going to um, get together and form uh, sodium in the uh, well actually let's, let's do it this way let's let's call it sodium chloride gas and then um, sodium chloride Solid, but but uh, what we're we're gonna do uh, for for uh, simplicity is we'll just treat this last step here as crystallization. 
right? That's the ions forming the solid ultimately. And what are these other steps? Well, solid going to gas is is that that step right there is vaporization. So if we looked at the energetics or the energy involved in vaporization, it would be the enthalpy of vaporization is what we call it. And then we could have the let's see, then we'd have this step here. This uh, oh correction drew the line in the wrong spot there. So we could have the gas losing its electron. The at, and, and so what's that? Well, that's the formation of an ion. So that's ionization. So if we looked up the energy, the ionization energy, we could uh, figure that out. Um, and then we've got we have chlorine gas going to chlorine uh, free atom of, of chlorine. That's breaking that chlorine double, uh, that chlorine chlorine bond. So that would be dissociation. And we could look at the bond dissociation energy for chlorine gas for a mole of chlorine and then the chlorine here accepting an electron it would be um, the electron affinity we could call it we'd call it electron affinity okay how much energy is involved in that and so if we looked at each of these energy terms individually and summed them up we would hope to get or we should get if this is going to be favorable this reaction, this overall reaction, we should get a negative value. So let's look at those things uh, step by step. So the first one we had was vaporization. Okay, so vaporization, what's the enthalpy of vaporization? The enthalpy of vaporization. So for uh, vaporization of one mole um, of sodium, we're going to get 109. Uh, kilojoules per mole for what was our next step here that we had in our logical steps here ionization the uh, ionization energy is uh, 497 kilojoules per mole so I mean so far this is not looking favorable right these are positive values this is, and not something that's going to happen uh, so there's there's obviously something missing. Uh, what are we going to do next? Uh, let's see. We can have dissociation um, of chlorine. Okay, so the dissociation of chlorine. Well, that takes energy. And in fact, it's a positive quantity, 242 kilojoules per mole. Um, we had that electron affinity. I mean, we know chlorine is hungry for an electron, so the electron affinity is actually favorable. It has a, a negative energy um, change. So that's 364 kilojoules per mole. But we can still see, I mean, you just add those up and we can quickly, I mean, without even doing the math, just eyeballing, you see that this is still going to be a positive um, value. So it's it's not favorable at this point, even with this negative contribution uh, for the electron affinity. So that means that this crystal, I mean, two ways of looking at it. If you know that overall this does happen, which we do know, um, this is going to, this crystallization has to be negative. But we can also look at that crystallization in a little bit more detail. And um, that's what I'll do here. So we, we've kind of done this previously when we started to look at atoms coming together. And the crystallization is, is based on this Coulombic attraction. Right? It's a charge attraction between oppositely charged ions. That's what we had up here. We have oppositely charged ions. So we've got a charge attraction between oppositely charged ions. And if we plot that Coulombic attraction energy, Coulombic energy, charge attraction <clears throat> versus the um, ionic separation or spacing. We usually use the letter R, lowercase r for that. Okay, and uh, we'd have um, repulsive up here. Repulsive, disgusting. No, not disgusting. R repulsion, they're pushing apart. And then attractive down here. And we could uh, what we could do is we could say let's look at 
um, let's look at a couple of uh, well uh, the, the con contributions. Well, the re um, actually let's, let's do first of all let's do the um, attractive energy. So there's there's this attractive energy, and the the attractive energy uh, scales it. So this attractive energy scales with one over r. Okay, and so so it's got that shape of a curve. But then there's competing that as they get really close together. And draw that. That's not too bad. It's kind of supposed to be a fairly sharp bend there. As they get really close together, as you get the smaller values of R and ionic separation, I could I could also show you this if you want if you wanted to consider say placing one nuclei here. So maybe we'll place the chlorine there, and then consider what happens when you bring um, a sodium. close to the chlorine. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. As we bring this sodium close, what's the, what's the energy? And there's a contribution from the attractive energy that's pulling together, and then there's this contribution from the repulsion, and the repulsion scales uh, with 1 over r to the n, where n is, you know, maybe 8 or 8 to 12 in that, in that range. So, it, But anyway, it's, it's a sharp increase as they get close together. The electrons, uh, as the electron uh, uh, electrons get close to one another, there's a repulsion between them. And what we're really interested in here at the end of the day is the net um, energy curve. So if you sum these two up, we'll end up with a curve that looks kind of like this. So this is the one that we're really most interested in, the net energy. And when the net energy is at a minimum, that provides for us the bond energy. Okay, the bond energy, and in fact, what we looked at previously was the, the force separation curve. Well, this is really looking at the same thing. It's just you integrate force over distance and you get energy. And this, so that means that this minimum of energy, where we saw previously force being equal to zero, this defines for us our equilibrium interatomic spacing, right? That's at equilibrium interatomic spacing. And what that looks like here, up at the top, that's this is the value of r, the spacing between centers of ions. So up here, that means this distance here is going to be the minimum of energy where r equals r naught. Anyway, so then all we need to do, I mean conceptually here, is say, okay, well, what if we take this bond energy on a per mole basis, and that's going to be this fine, this essentially that that's well that's what this crystallization is. So if we if we know what the crystallization is, I'm gonna, right? That's over here. Let me get there. There we go. That's a mess. Then we're trying to put it all together. This bond energy here is very negative, minus 777 kilojoules per mole. So when you add when you when you contribute this very favorable negative energy from crystallization forming the ordered solid, then this all these steps can, can proceed because overall the reaction now has this overall energy change of um, minus 414 kilojoules per mole. And so you can see that by looking at the individual energy contributions we saw that formation of an ordered solid was energetically favorable.